Good morning, good morning. It's Amy Yamada here with my weekly chat with Amy live. And uh, if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Amy Yamada. I host my weekly chat with Amy every single Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific, unless I'm traveling. And uh, I'm all about helping entrepreneurs to deeply connect with yourself, your vision, and your ideal clients so that you can create the income and the impact that you've always wanted. So thank you for joining me. So happy to have you here. And I recently returned from my amazing retreat. So I, I headed out to Florida. So I live in the greater Seattle area and I flew out to Captiva Island in Florida. I had never been there before, but I'd found this gorgeous house on the ocean and I just had this vision of hosting an incredible retreat for powerhouse women entrepreneurs so that I could really bring us together in person and empower them to have breakthroughs in their businesses. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the last full day of my retreat, I actually completely lost my voice. So it's still a little bit coming back. So forgive me if I'm a little bit scratchy. I'll take a little sip here. So anyway, I, um, while I was at this retreat, so here we are at this gorgeous, you know, house on the ocean. It's this mansion. We've got our own private pool. And on the, the ocean side, it was like a little inlet. And there were actual dolphins out there and pelicans. And I mean, it was more than I could have ever imagined. But what really created the most beautiful energy was the people who attended this experience. So um, I did two back-to-back -back retreats and I had my team and, and our guests there. And, um, and just the people who were, were drawn to this experience were purpose-driven. First and foremost, they just wanna help people. And second to that, of course, they wanna create financial freedom in their lives. And so what we did was we made sure that they had everything that they needed from like self-care in the mornings with yoga under the palm trees, we had a personal chef and a team in the kitchen, so we had all the meals that were delicious and healthy and wonderful. And then we would do um, workshops, so I'd lead a workshop, and then I would create space and time, like personal time, to either work on their businesses, have one-on-one -on -one time, or have some quiet space, you know? And I think that having that kind of a flow in even our daily lives is so powerful so that they can really have the space to think, open up their mind to possibility, and create what they're meant to create in this world. And part of this, the training part of things was all around handling objections. And the reason why I decided to host this part of the experience was that I've heard so many entrepreneurs come to me and say, I just want to help people. I just want to create financial freedom. I just want to make a difference. And even though I feel confident in my ability to help people, where I don't feel confident is in my marketing and sales. And that's where I come in. That's where my team comes in because I'm all about dialing in your marketing messaging and also having sales conversations that are not pushy or salesy and instead really committed to making a difference for someone. And when the objections come up, the objections they are just fear. So, so for today, I thought why not show you behind the scenes and give you my secrets to handling objections with ease and flow. So thank you for joining me today. And if this is a topic that you know that your circle of influence could really use the help on as well, go ahead and click on the share button and for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, go ahead and share this link with others because I know that when more purpose-driven entrepreneurs are able to walk people through the resistance, because that's all it is, then they will be able to make a bigger difference for them and for the business, they'll be able to grow and make a bigger impact. So I hope you're excited. I'm going to share with you the best of what I've got. Um, and just a quick side note, like I said, the, the last day, the last full day of my second retreat, because I did these two retreats back to back. I completely lost my voice and I had my moment in the morning, you know, when things go sideways, I was like, oh my God, like I had nothing but a whisper. I know some of you saw my Facebook live where I just whispered the whole time. And uh, <laughs> I, I had a little freak out moment because I'm like, how am I going to lead a full day when I have absolutely no voice? And what was so great about this was first of all, I had so much love and support around me. Um, and, uh, and instead of letting it take me sideways, I thought, you know what? This is my chance to show up because it's not when everything's going great that I'm being challenged or stretched. It's when things don't go as planned and how do I choose to show up in the moment? And what's wild is that I always tell my clients, my colleagues, my community that my message, like what I live for, what I stand for is to give other people's vision a voice. And here I was that last morning with no voice. So I thought, okay, the universe is like messing with me, but um, it ended up being a really incredible day. I shifted some things around and I actually whispered, I led an entire day with a whisper, and still, this very training, I mean, I'm gonna give you the highlight reel because of our, our time limitations today, but 
this is this was their favorite favorite training they got the most out of it and and these ladies these powerhouse women had gone gone off and they've been on their enrollment conversations and they're feeling more confident in them and they're increasing their sales so uh, yes good morning everybody so okay so I'm gonna go ahead and dive right in feel free to take notes and um, I'll, I'll open up for Q&A at the end so as I'm chatting if you think of a question, go ahead and post it, and then based on how much time we have at the end, I'm gonna answer as many questions as possible, because I really wanna give you the juice of how to walk people through that resistance, handle those objections, and know that what you have to offer is something so helpful to the people you're getting in front of that it's just about walking them through their fear, okay? All right, here we go. So I actually typed up notes for once, because I know, you know, I like to chat, so. Um, there's so many things I could share with you, but I thought here are some elements that can be really helpful. So first of all, I love to lead with compassion, lead with compassion. So what do I mean by that? So when somebody, so if I'm on a call with somebody or if one of my sales team members, I've got an incredible team, when they're on a call with somebody who is the perfect fit for our powerhouse mastermind, for example, that we're launching in April, they will talk to them about, you know, they'll find out about their vision and their why and they'll really get to know them and deeply understand them and help them and even give them some golden nuggets to get started with. And then if they feel like it's a great recommendation for them to step into the mastermind, they'll make that recommendation. And then sometimes fear sets in, fear sets in and the person they're chatting with like, wow, I, I really see the value of this. At the same time, I just don't know if I can afford it or I don't know if this is the right timing for me or I need to talk to my spouse and all sorts of objections can come up. So whatever the objection is, lead with compassion. And what I mean by that is instead of just jumping right back into either trying to establish value, which is important, or jumping right in to say, well, don't you want this or try to be pushy or you could be on the opposite side of things, for those of you who are recovering people pleasers like me, where you're like, oh, okay, no problem, because you want to be the nice person. Instead, lead with compassion. You can say, and only say this if you mean it with integrity, but if you understand where the person's coming from, then say it. Just say, you know what, I, I understand. I totally get where you're coming from. And get out of your head and drop into your heart. So when I'm listening to someone, especially if they have a money objection, and I've been through financial difficulties in my past, so I will drop into my heart and take myself back to the time where I was there and say, you know what, I totally get it. And then I share a brief story, one of multiple stories that I have from when I was going through that time in my life. I'll say, you know, I'll never forget when I was in that place myself. And I'll actually go there. I'll be willing, like when I teach the power of deep connection, I'll actually go to a moment where I had a really vulnerable thought. So what that could look like, I know I've shared this story several times, but um, I might say, you know, I'll never forget the moment when I was on a call just like this, and I was talking to an incredible coach that I felt a connection with, and I really knew that I wanted to step into her program, and, and I'll drop into my heart, and I'll feel what I felt in that moment, and I'll say what came up for me, which was, and I had no idea how I was gonna pay for it. Like, that was a real moment for me. And oftentimes if I'm talking to someone who's considering my powerhouse mastermind, which is my only ongoing group coaching program kicking off in April, and it's going to be an incredible community, I know that someone may really want to step in, but they may have their resistance that comes up and they might be in that moment that's very real for them, right? So I understand that moment and I will go back to when I was in that moment and by sharing with them my vulnerable experience, it opens up the connection again where they're like, Oh my gosh, she understands me. Because at the core of this human being experience, we just wanna feel heard and validated and understood. We wanna feel accepted and at the very core, we want to feel loved. So if you can create that kind of energy in an enrollment conversation, a sales conversation, then the person you're chatting with is going to be much more open to you because you're willing to go there with them. So it's not about pushing them, so, so lead with compassion hear where they're coming from and, and feel for them. It's not about getting enrolled in their story or their resistance and their fear, but it still is a beautiful thing when you can be there for someone and understand them, okay? So that's the first one. The second one is, I know a lot of my entrepreneurs, so this may relate to you, is that they get that, 
oh so terrifying money objection, right? Um, so now the way I look at it, there's actually two different types of money objections that I'm familiar with myself in my many, many years of experience, which are either A, they say, oh wow, that's really expensive, or that's pricey, or I'm getting sticker shock, or wow, that's this much per hour, you know? So that, that if, you're getting, if you're getting that money objection, then that's all about value, like you haven't established the value in the conversation. And then the other money objection is when somebody says, okay, I totally see the value, I just don't know if I can afford it, or I just need to kind of see if that's something that I could even do. So you can, you can kind of think back to your own enrollment conversations for those of you who are having them, and think about which one of the two do I get? So if it's, if it's A, the one where they're like, oh wow, that's expensive, then think about where do you go in the conversation leading up to that moment? Are you really sharing with them the value of what it is you're offering? And not to make it all about you and your offering, but showing them how what you offer is gonna help them get to their vision. So there's another thing that you can write down if you haven't been practicing this yet, which is it's all about helping them get to their vision and it's less about you and your offer. Your offer is extremely valuable and very important, but it's not about you, right? It's about them and their vision and you showing them how this, what you offer is a big piece or at least a piece of getting them where, to where they wanna go. Cause they're enrolled in their, I mean, hopefully they're enrolled in their vision. Sometimes they, they want, they say what they want, but then they're not willing to do what it takes. So that's, that's a whole nother thing that you can talk about. It's like, you know, talking about again, I, I get it. If there's something that you want to do, it's about aligning your action steps with your vision. So my point is when it's the money objection, make sure that you're establishing value and make sure that you're sharing how your offering is in line with their vision. Okay. Now, if you're getting the, the second type of money objection, which is, okay, I totally see the value. I just don't know if I can afford it. I lead with compassion. When I hear that, I lead with compassion because even as I've grown, I invest at higher and higher and higher levels into things that at one point in my journey, I would have never imagined that I'd invest in. But now I see the light of what is possible when I invest, invest in great coaches and experiences and events and, and really take me as well as my team to the next level. So if they're saying, I totally see the value, I just don't know if I can afford it, then I shift into leading with compassion. You know what? I totally understand. And then again, I will share a brief story about a time, whether it was a while back or recently, because as I stretch myself, you know, I, I can really truly and intimately relate to that feeling of, okay, this is like that next level. Whereas before $500 seemed like a lot. And now $50,000 seems like a lot, you know, it just, it stretches at every level. So I'll take them to a story. I'll say, you know, I totally get it. In fact, just recently, I decided to put on my first ever three-day live event that's going to be happening this summer, and um, I've never done this before. Uh, part of me is really excited, and then part of me thinks about the huge investment that it takes to rent a venue, and the event production team, and all the bells and whistles that I want to have to create an incredible experience. So I understand that stretch. At the same time, I'm committed to taking steps towards my vision, making decisions that are in line with my vision versus making decisions that are in line with my fear. So my point is, when I say that, so, okay, let me bring it back for a second. I get so excited about this topic, can you tell? Um, when they're sharing with you that they just don't know if they can afford it, of course that can be real, very real for them, right? They can look at their checkbook or their online checking and their credit card statements. They're like, no, really, Amy, I just, I don't have the money. And I can relate to that moment. I also know that I myself and I've witnessed so many others that when they didn't have the money, they found a way. So it's just about committing to the vision, just saying, what if it were possible? So here's a couple of things you can ask them to say, well, why don't we just think about this? Like, what if it were possible? What would it look like? Even if this is just a fun exercise, what would it look like if it were possible? What if it were easy? What would that look like? Because what, what you're doing then is you're being generous enough to open up their mind, like just open them up to possibility and share ideas until a point where they share an idea, you know? So, um, so what I call this, I'm gonna shift into this next tip, which is what I call shifting into best friend energy. <laughs> so this is something I shared at my retreat with my clients. Um, so for example, if I was someone who wanted to invest in something and I shared with my best friend or one of my best friends, gosh, I really wanna do this, whether it was for my business or personal. It's like, gosh, I really wanna do this and I just don't know if I can afford it. I would hope that my best friend would say, 
Well, Amy, before you decide that you can't do it, what if we brainstorm some ideas to see what if it were possible? You know, so shift into like, go from being like a salesperson, not that I like to even have that energy ever in the conversation, especially for those of you who are coaches, like really stand for them. Whatever it is you're offering hopefully solves a problem and can help people get to where they want to go. So shift into best friend energy and imagine that this person that you're talking to is interested in what you offer to get them to their vision and you are now their best friend who loves them and says, well, you know what? What if we at least, even if you don't step into this, what if we at least brainstormed ideas to see what could be possible for you before you decide that you can't do something? And even if, you, if you're feeling walls come up because it's not about putting pressure, like, okay, this is a, a really golden nugget, okay? A real golden nugget, especially for you recovering people pleasers like me. If ever I feel like the pressure is coming up with, like a feeling that if they're feeling the pressure or we're feeling some like wall coming up, I like to bring that wall down, just bring it down. And the way that I do that is in my tone of voice, not being attached to whether or not they say yes. This is a key thing. Do not be attached to whether or not they say yes to do and be committed out of your mind to make a difference for them no matter what. There are plenty of people that I've gotten on calls with, whether it's Skype, Zoom, phone, whatever, and they're just not at a place or they're just so in their fear and I haven't been able to walk them through the resistance. And I don't get discouraged by that because I know that even if they never invest a dime with me and my coaching and my programs, that hopefully our conversation gave them something of value that changed the trajectory of their life, even if it's a tiny little tweak, right? So you get to make a difference for them. So to bring it back, shift into best friend energy and just think about how you would want your best friend to stand for you and your vision if you were having blocks come up for you in your mind. This is also, especially for those of you who are coaches, like how many coaches are out there? Type in yes if you're a coach. Type in yes, yes, yes if you're a coach of any kind or if you're someone who provides a service. You get to stand for their vision. You get to stand for their vision. So what do I mean by that? If somebody's saying that they really want something and you know that your offering can help them get there, then I believe it's your duty to stand for their vision and stand strong. So, okay, so one of the things that I've noticed is if my own people pleaser comes up, it's like, oh, just be nice to them, let them go, just catch up with them later, follow up in a few months. There's a little voice that comes up, right? It's like, oh, just, I wanna be a nice person. And while that's great, that's not me standing for their vision. That's not be, me being the best coach, the best leader, the best influencer in their life. So even though this voice might come up, if it's really loud, <laughs> this is my loud voice, I'm like, shut up, then I will actually crush this voice by calling it out. So I'll say to you, like if you and I were on a conversation, I'd say, you know what? There's a voice within me that's just saying, oh, just let them go, be nice, like, because I really want to be liked by you. At the same time, if I didn't stand for your vision, that would make me a shitty coach. I say these exact words. I'm like, and I'm here to be a great coach. I'm here to be the best coach and I'm here to stand for your vision. So when you share with me that you want to, and then I fill in the blank with what they shared with me that they so badly want, right? They want to build a business. They want to make a difference. They want to have 10 K months or they want to make a million dollars, whatever it is. I am here to take a stand for you, especially if you're not taking a stand for yourself, you know? Just like I have my own coach and my own community that stands for me when I have a moment of vulnerability and weakness and, and having a block in my head thinking, who am I to think that I can do this, right? So even in the enrollment conversation, even in the enrollment conversation, you have the opportunity to coach them through that moment of resistance. So this is what I love about objections is that this is your test, right? So that's another thing, I say it out loud. I'll say, you know what? This is actually a coachable opportunity for both of us. And I'll say it with a smile, make, you know, kind of make light of it. I'll say, why don't we just play around with this? Let's see if I can be a great coach for you to work through this resistance with you and this objection and this challenge. And let's see if you are open and coachable. And they always laugh, They're like, of course I want to be open and coachable. I'm like, I do too. And I am someone who has been like a controller promoter for those of you who know the, all the different personality types. And, um, but, but now in my journey, I realize it's not about ego. It's about me being open and coachable when I'm stuck and I reach out to my coach. So do you see how when you can really take a stand for someone, it's actually a coachable opportunity and you can really make a difference for them? It's a super powerful moment. 
and then they're being they are able to experience what it's like to work with you already in the conversation so I know these things can take some practice but I hope you're taking notes because this can be really powerful in the future in your moment conversations okay so the next tip that I want to share is about okay I kind of touched on this focus on standing for their vision versus getting enrolled in their fear so I don't know who originally said this but um, someone shared with me once someone is always enrolling someone right someone is always enrolling someone so either you're enrolling them into your offering which is also in line with their vision or they're enrolling you in their story and the reason why they think they can't do it I believe there's always a way when somebody wants something badly enough and they're committed enough they will find a way so stand for their vision and what I will even say to them like one of my messages I believe I meant to share with the world is to empower people to make decisions that are in line with their vision versus making decisions that are in line with their fear and that's fear uncertainty scarcity and lack because I just think about my own life right I think every time I make a decision every time you make a decision we are practicing a way of being we are practicing a way of being so as I'm practicing a way of being I am so committed out of my mind to continuously making decisions that are in line with my vision and my commitments versus my fear because if I'm practicing this over here this is going to become a habit and it's going to be solidified and cemented and someday somebody will say oh she's just set in her ways I shared this at the retreat you know when people say so and so oh she's just set in her ways it's always a negative it's always a negative and I always I thought about that phrase like oh she or he is set in their ways and it's a negative I thought you know what I will be okay if I am set in my ways if my ways are freaking awesome <laughs> you know and being set in your ways in an awesome way takes practice of a habit and an action step and decision-making skills that are in line with the highest version of yourself versus being in your fear like just screw that you know like I don't want to look back at the end of life okay let's fast forward to when we're all old and gray and fabulous and living on an island together or whatever in a resort <laughs> I don't want to look back on my life and say I'm glad I lived so fearfully and played so small which may have looked like so safe but I'm glad I played so small that I never really took any risks I don't know about you but I'm so not okay with that I'm not especially as an entrepreneur as someone who sees herself as a powerhouse woman <laughs> I was about to curse but just F that you know like it's just not okay so, so to bring it back to the enrollment conversations I will actually say to the person I'm chatting with you know I don't know about you but for me I'm so committed to practicing making decisions that are in line with my vision versus making decisions that are in line with my fear because I'm not I'm not okay with being a fear based entrepreneur a fear based woman a fear based human being we are only in this human being experience for a limited time so why live in fear okay so you see how I get fired up about this <laughs> oh it's my favorite topic okay and finally um, and again I'm gonna open up for questions so if you have questions and if there's certain objections that are coming up go ahead and type it in because I'm gonna open up for Q&A in just a minute um, the last tip I want to share was that to only make an offer when you believe in your heart of hearts that your offer will make a difference for the person you're chatting with I, I think far too often especially early on in entrepreneurship entrepreneurs are so like in their scarcity or stressed out about attracting clients so like okay this has to work or I have to close them or I have to bring in a sale so I could pay my bills like remember your if you have cash flow issues that is not the responsibility of your ideal client that's sitting in front of you whether they're in person or over the phone it is not their problem so you get to solve your own cash flow issues and not put the pressure on the person in front of you so instead set that aside set aside the pressure before you're even on the call and think and listen to the person you're chatting with and say okay do I in my heart of hearts with integrity believe that what I have to offer can help this person get to where they want to go and if the answer is no if the answer is no do not make the offer of what you have because it's not going to help them get to where they want to go you can still make a recommendation of something else or refer them to someone else or say here's what I would do if I were in your shoes what research you would do what event you would attend what coach you would connect with what you would invest in just so you can share with them you know and, and brainstorm some ideas but that way you can feel really good about not being attached to whether or not they say yes to you because you're not even making an offer unless you truly believe in your heart of hearts you can help them okay so 
So it's a fun topic. I think it's so fun. Okay, so I'm gonna take just a little bit of time to answer your questions. So I'm gonna scroll, scroll, scroll. Wow, lots of great comments here. Uh, Amy Fox, when you ask you, Angel Amy, she said, yes, I talk to every stranger client from a genuine place in my body as if they were a close friend and it's magical. Awesome. Holly says, this is so approachable and non pressury Yeah, take the pressure off. <laughs> Diane says, love it. Best friend energy. Yes, BFF. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. Uh, Holly says, I get A and B. Yeah, the money objections. Totally. Okay, so love the best friend energy. I know it's not kind of cool. Hey, Phaedra. Okay, so let's see here. Holly says, one thing I've struggled with is follow-up. What do you recommend for that? Sometimes I straight up drop the ball or sometimes I used to get upset they didn't say yes and didn't follow up. Attach the outcome. Okay, so Holly, this is a great one. So follow-up, like the power is in the follow-up. You know, I think about, just take it back to your own personal experiences. Have you ever had someone who made an offer to you that continued to follow up with you to a point where you said yes? And on the other side of it, you were actually thanking them. I mean, this happened to me just last year when my own coach was recommending me to a higher level leadership experience. And I'd already done a ton of leadership training. So part of me is like, haven't I graduated from that? And she just stood for me. She kept reaching out to me, not in a way of pressuring, but really in standing for my vision. So what I recommend for that is first of all, think, bring it back to deep, deep, deeply connecting with yourself. You know, I'm all about the power of deep connection. So drop into your heart and think, have I ever had someone stand for my vision to the point where they recommended something several times, whether it was a coach, whether it was for personal or professional reasons, like think about that moment and how grateful you were that they stood for you. So first I think about that. And then I think about how I would hope that someone would care enough about me to reach out to me. Like when you're thinking about someone that is so perfect for what you're offering, like when their, their name, their smile, their energy keeps coming to your heart and mind, just reach out to them. Whether you're calling them on the phone, emailing them, texting them, Facebook Messenger. I mean, we have so many different forms of communication, which for some of you might drive you nuts. I think what a blessing that we have multiple ways to reach out to them. So sometimes I'll just old school pick up the phone and call them, leave them a voicemail message and just say, hey, you know, hey, Holly, I was just thinking about you. And I really enjoyed a conversation last week about this and this and this, especially when you share with me your vision of this and this and this. Like tie it back to their vision. It's about their vision, not your offering, their vision. And you're actually helping them re-enroll themselves into their vision because right now they're not there. Right now they're here, they wanna be here, right? So, so they're, not, they're not taking a stand for their vision if they're not taking action steps and making decisions that are in line with their vision. So when you can help show them what you see in them, like one of the questions that I ask my sales team is what vision do you see possible for them? And I ask my clients this as well for their, their clients, right? Their ideal client. What do you see possible for them? Be generous enough to take a little time to hold that person in your heart and say, what do I see possible for this person? When she or he or shared with me that they want this and this and this, do I see this as a possibility for them? And what could I see possible if they just filled in the gaps of what's missing for them to get to where they want to go? And I have that. I have the gap. Like I always think about my ideal clients. My ideal clients are coaches and service-based entrepreneurs that first and foremost are here to make a difference. And second to that, they want financial freedom. And they, are so, they feel so confident, or at least confident enough in the fulfillment side of things, meaning the actual service or opportunity or coaching that they provide, right? They feel confident in that. Where they get stuck is in the marketing and the sales, generating leads, talking to clients in their marketing messaging, building confidence with themselves, putting themselves out there, writing emails to their ideal clients that land with them, and finally having the heart-centered sales conversation to make an offer that doesn't feel sleazy or pushy or too nice, but really taking a stand for them. Like that is the gap that I fill, and I feel so strongly about it, because I'm like, everybody wants to be here with fulfillment and doing really well and traveling or whatever their dream case scenario is, but what's missing is this middle piece of marketing and sales having a strong marketing message. What do you stand for? What problem do you solve? Who is it that you serve? I heard Joe Polish on an interview the other day say, who do you wanna be a hero to? And it got me thinking. And it's usually something that you have overcome yourself to get to where you wanna go. And that pain point that you were in, the people who are in that pain point now are the people you wanna serve. So I love thinking about these things. So Holly, to bring it back to you and your question about follow-up, take a stand for them and reach out to them. Like, I'm not here to bug people every single day and blow up their phone, right? Nobody wants that. But think about how would you like somebody to stand for you? 
So I think every you know couple of days or so, just reaching out, whether it's phone, text, email, and just saying, hey, I was just thinking about you. Now, if you text, make sure you keep the text messages short. Um, and same thing with voicemail messages. Nobody wants like a you know two minute plus voicemail. I've been guilty of it myself. And just say, hey, I was just thinking about you and, and take the pressure off. Just know, know that there's no pressure for you to step into this. I'm just here to help you. And when you shared with me that you wanted X, Y, and Z, I actually have an idea that I wanted to run by you. And actually think of an idea that would help them even if they never work with you. Just say, so if you're around today, I would love to jump back on a call with you even if for, t- for 10 or 15 minutes and gift them that. Practice generosity. There have been people who I've talked to multiple times and just gifted them generosity. Like if I have the expertise and the knowledge, I'm here to help them. Of course, I, my top priority are my existing clients right now because they've invested in me and I've invested in them with my time and my expertise and my skill sets and my team and all the support I provide. But I can still carve out time here and there for someone who I can tell is a powerhouse, who has the vision, who wants to make a difference, who wants financial freedom. I will stand for them as long as possible. Because there have been people who I've talked to a handful of times over the course of two years and then they step into my program. So just hold them high. Uh, Let's see. Okay, Ken, my love, Ken. What do you do when someone says they aren't ready to make a decision right now? Okay, so that's a great question. So if they aren't ready, if they're saying, I'm not ready to make a decision right now, then I will ask some questions about like, because oftentimes to me what that's saying is that they're not fully trusting themselves to make a decision. So I wanna know what's really coming up for them. So I might say to them, awesome, I, you know, again, lead with compassion, I, to- I hear you, and do you have any questions for me about my powerhouse mastermind? Like what's entailed in it, or how it can help you get to where you wanna go? I'll, I'll open it up for questions, because maybe I haven't answered all of their questions. And, um, and sometimes I'll say, no, 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 it's okay, I think you've answered everything, I just I'm just not ready, I just don't wanna make a decision today. So. I will continue to ask because I want to know on a deeper level. I'll say, okay, is there something coming up for you right now? Or what's coming up for you right now? So, and anytime you ask a question, my clients know this, ask the question and then be quiet. <laughs> like, don't keep talking. Is there something coming up for you right now? Because blah, 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 blah. Ask the question and then create space for them to answer. So I might say to someone, hey, so is there something coming up for you right now? And I'll be quiet, even if it's a dramatic pause. And then they'll say, well, and then usually by creating that space where they feel it's safe to share vulnerably, then they'll open up to me and say, well, actually, I'm, I'm invested in a couple of programs right now and I haven't followed through with them. So part of me feels guilty that I haven't done what I said I was going to do. And what if I invest in this? And, you know, so usually what will happen is that they will share more with me that I can walk through that resistance with them. Now, sometimes you'll have someone who's a controller. And I I do have controlling tendencies, not to control others, but I like to be in control, right? I've loosened up on that quite a bit. But I know that there was a time where I would just say, I'm not going to make a decision today on the phone call. So, um, so, you know, and so I'd say, but I will give you an answer next week. So if it's a controller, just know that you can't control them or not that that's your desire, but it's not about getting them to make an answer today. But I always book the next step. So I might say, you know, I totally hear you. So why don't you take a little time to think about it? And if you think of any more questions, let me know. And how about we chat, and then I'll usually go like two days later. So I'll say if it's a Wednesday, I'll say, why don't we chat on Friday? Are you available Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific? So I will lead the conversation in the next step. Plus then it just feels like there is a next step and there's some level of closure coming up, okay? Okay, scrolling, scrolling. Um, Holly says, wow, two years, that's endurance. (laughs) Yeah, I know, right? But sometimes that's what it takes, so. Awesome. Well, I'm just looking at the time here. I'm going to wrap this one up. Went a little long today, but um, was this helpful, everybody? I would love to hear if you have any big takeaways. <laughs> Look, I just did the thing where I asked the question and I did not be quiet. <laughs> was this helpful? Pause. <laughs> anyway, I hope this has been helpful. And if it has been, I invite you to click on the share button and write a personal note in your post just saying, hey, for those of you who are entrepreneurs who are here to make a difference, here's a great training. I believe it's a great training on how to handle objections with ease and flow where you're focused more on making a difference and standing for someone else's vision versus being a people pleaser, being pushy, or being really uncomfortable when somebody has an objection. An objection is just their fear showing up and sharing with you what's coming up for them and it's all good. Like just remain calm, it's all good, and you can walk them through that. So 
Um, awesome. Super helpful. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Gabriel. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. You all have a wonderful week and uh, we'll be back next Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific. So I hope you'll join me then. Sending you much love and I will talk to you soon. Mwah. Bye.